Recording? Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian, and uh, I'm a plantaholic. Hey guys, what's going on? So welcome back to my channel and I know I promised you guys last time that I would be doing a plant tour soon but since my last plant haul, I ended up picking up a few more plants and it just didn't make sense for me to do a tour yet without introducing to you guys uh, those plants that I picked up and what I mean with a few plants, I think I picked up about 10 or 11 new ones since then uh, so yes, I am officially a plantaholic I'm a plant addict and uh, it doesn't matter, I'm okay with it. Uh, at least it is a kind of addiction that I am uh, proud of, if that makes sense. And before we get started, for those of you guys who's new to the channel, if this is your first time and you enjoy plants and or you're a plantaholic like me, hit that subscribe button. And by the way, I also created a new Instagram page uh, dedicated solely to my plant collections because all my friends, some of them were really getting annoyed with my plant updates. So if you want to follow that, you can follow it at Crazy Plant Guy, and uh, that's where you'll see most of my collections. Um, as a disclaimer, if you are new to this channel, I don't just do plants. Uh, I also do sneakers, reaction, vlogs, and any other thing that really interests me. Um, I don't have, uh, so it's not a specific niche, niche or niche, N niche. I say niche. I don't know why people say niche. Um, it's not specifically a, a niche channel or niche channel to um, plants. So, but yeah, anyway, let's just get started. So, let me start with ta da! This one is a Peperomia pixie. And um, what I like about this plant in particular is the leaves has this uh, kind of like a peach feel. Um, you know, it's kind of fuzzy, and which is pretty cool. And one thing about uh, Peperomias is they are pretty easy houseplants to take care of. Um, they do like bright light, but obviously no direct sunlight. I think that just goes with a lot of plants. You never ever want to put them in direct sunlight. You will burn the leaves. But the one thing about Peperomias is there are so many species out there. I think there's probably over a thousand. They do, um, you know, I think they're native country or native area South America. And when it comes to obviously watering, you know, you guys can water, I water my plants usually once a week. Uh, I never let them sit in water and uh, I also don't typically let them dry out completely. Um, I, that's just kind of what's worked for me so far. But this one is another beautiful Peperomia, again, obviously part of the pepper family. So this is another, um, this one was my second Peperomia. And then I end up getting a third one, uh, I think which is a day after I got this one, which is called the, ta-da, another Peperomia. Obviously this one is called the Peperomia obstucifolia, also known as the dwarf pepper. And uh, this one has um, dark circular leaves, almost um, kind of a succulent feeling to it. So it's pretty tough, I guess. And yeah, I follow same plant care instructions as I do with the pixie. And uh, again, another peperomia. So this one is officially my third peperomia plant and uh, another one to my collection. So uh, I'm happy with that. Um, the next plant I got is, ta-da! The ponytail palm tree, also known as the elephant's foot. And I think it's because of this, um, you know, very thick, trunk at the base and it has this narrow and it becomes narrow as you go up and it has this like hair like leaves so this one interestingly enough um, you know reminded reminds me so much of when I went to Puerto Vallarta and I stayed at an Airbnb and this guy had this huge giant uh, ponytail palm tree that's probably about maybe six feet tall and I was really really uh, impressed by it so I know these can go really really big but I don't know how long that one's gonna take, uh, but this guy's actually not even a palm or a tree. Uh, they're more of a succulent and they definitely like you know, bright light, but um, this is a pretty tough plant to kill and it can go you know, a couple weeks without water, uh, maybe four weeks, but again, I wouldn't push it. So I water this guy maybe once every two weeks. Um, but yeah, he's one of those uh, uh, plants that are pretty cool to have in your home because it, he's just a neat looking type of plant. Uh, but more importantly, I think what I like about this guy is he's just very easy to take care of. Um, so the next plant I picked up is, ta-da! 
This is the Diefenbachia, also known as the dumb cane plant. And the one thing about this guy is I actually found him at Home Depot and he needed to be rescued uh, because he had all these yellow leaves um, around him and clearly he was very neglected. The soil was super dry and uh, I had to rescue him. So I got him the other day and I cut most of the yellow leaves to obviously give him this fresh new look. Um, I kept maybe a couple more, um, you know, leaves are yellow and that's because I want this leaf to sprout out a bit more before I cut him off. I cut this guy uh, off so that way, um, you know, it ensures that this leaf grows um, uh, to its full potential. But um, yeah, the one thing about the dumb king plant is, um, again, great house plant to take care of, um, you know, typical, um, uh, care tips, bright light, um, obviously water them once a week. Um, don't let this in water, but these plants are actually very toxic and um, so they're not good to definitely have around the house if you have pets or kids. And if you do have them, I definitely keep them uh, far away from um, um, them. I mean, my cat, it's pretty good. She doesn't nibble on any of my plants that's around the floor. The only one she, she nibbles on is the, um, the spider plant, uh, which is okay. Um, um, I read that it's fine, it's not as toxic, but this one apparently um, can cause your mouth to really swell up and not talk, and I think that's the reason where the name Dumb Cane came from. So yeah, great house plant, beautiful house plant, but just very toxic, so be careful uh, with this plant if you do have it around the house and yeah so the next plant I got is ta-da this is the coffee plant or also called Coffea Aribaca um, anyway one of actually my favorite pickups um, during this past few days and I don't know I think I like it because it's just look at the way um, you know, the, the stems are, it has a thin stem and it has this nice, beautiful green foliage. Um, obviously, this can grow into um, very, very big plants like you see in the coffee plantations um, when you go out to South America or even when I went to Hawaii, I remember looking at the plant trees, uh, the coffee trees. Um, but I like this as a house plant because, um, you know, I think the one thing about the house plants that's cool to have is you can get obviously different varieties. They don't just have to be plants that grow um, you know, whether just green foliage or, or um, um, you know, leaves or flowers, but plants that you can actually harvest, like a coffee plant or a tea plant that I have, which is also another plant I'm gonna show you, but um, I like to have that kind of variety. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna grow this guy to produce, you know, coffee beans and that I'm gonna harvest, but if he does, great. Uh, if not, I'm okay with it, but Again, the one thing about the coffee plant is it's best to keep the soil um, more on the moist side and not on the soggy or, or wet side. And the soil is typically uh, rich peat base uh, with obviously excellent drainage. Uh, I think that's kind of my rule of thumb when it comes to the soil of most of my plants is um, I do like to mix a bit of cacti or drainage, um, a high drainage type of soil uh, just to make sure that um, the water you know, uh, goes through it pretty good. But yeah, one of my favorite plant is this coffee plant. Uh, I love it, and he's a cute little guy. The one thing about plants that I, you know, I don't know if you guys name your plants. Um, I think I might start doing that because um, uh, I get a little bit confused sometimes with all the names. So I might might do the name of plants. But so far, um, I haven't named any of my plants. But I think I will do that in my probably next video or segment. Um, so the next plant I got after this is ta da. It is the tea plant that uh, I was mentioning about. So also known as the Camellia sinensis. So again, this is uh, the plant that is used to uh, make green tea or black tea. And um, it's an evergreen shrub. Uh, I love this plant in particular. And um, you know, they say that it takes about maybe up to three years before he can produce flowers and where and you can harvest the leaves to make green tea, but again, I don't know if I'm ever gonna do that. Um, if, he, if, I, if he does, great. But for now, uh, I just like having a variety of plants and this one um, uh, is beautiful when it does produce and bloom flowers. So uh, I'm so happy to have him on my collection, in my collection. Uh, again, when it comes to the soil, I think he likes to be more on the drier side. 
and um, bright light, but he actually probably prefers a bit more shade. Uh, so filtered bright light, um, I think is best uh, for this guy to grow really, really well. And again, uh, water him, um, you know, once a week or typically with this plant and the coffee plant, um, their leaves will tell you when they need to be watered. Uh, you'll see it when they start drooping quite a bit and uh, that's probably the best time to also water it as well. But again, I try to avoid uh, getting there because uh, I never know when I will forget one day. So uh, I like to kind of keep my plants. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I check my plants every day um, to see if they need water, to see how they're looking, if there's any dead leaves, if there's any gnats. Uh, I actually do not go a day without checking my plants unless I'm traveling for work and at that time I do get a friend of mine uh, to stop by my place every couple of days just to check on the plants uh, and obviously the cat Nemo because uh, you know she is special and uh, she is also the uh, other love of my life besides my plants um, so yeah so the next plant I got is ta-da the Hoya Carnosa Variegata um, so this is my first Hoya and I am in love with her because um, first of all I love this tri-color one. Uh, it's mostly green and has a bit of cream color but there are times where, I think this guy right here, Let's see if you can focus, where she, uh, okay, uh, you can't really see but she will have a bit of pink. Um, um, oh, this one right here has a pink. Let's see if you guys will focus. Okay, never mind. So anyway, um, this particular plant um, is um, my first Hoya, and they typically like medium to bright light. Uh, you know, the one thing about the the Hoya is they prefer to be, you know, have less water or more on the drier side. So less is more when it comes to these plants. And uh, but yeah, I got this guy a couple of weeks ago, and he's looking, you know, he's starting to look really good. I'm hoping. Um, he's gonna grow really really beautiful and really big because they are trailing plants so I'm not sure if I'm actually going to keep this as a um, uh, in a pot or maybe as a sitting plant or maybe hanging um, I, I think I might keep him just you know sitting for now and see how well he grows um, but yeah uh, favorite of mine so I'm very, very excited uh, for this Hoya and uh, because I love the Hoya, I ended up getting another one. Um, this one, the Carrie, so which looks like, ta-da! So it's a single leaf uh, Hoya Carrie Variegata right now. And um, the one thing about this particular plant is they are quite rare for me to find anyway up here in Toronto. And uh, I've been looking for this plant for a while. And when I found the single leaf, uh, I was very, very excited. I mean, he was a little bit expensive, I'm gonna be honest. And then I got home and I started obviously reading a bit about how long it might take for this little guy to grow into a big beautiful plant. And apparently with, when it comes to single leaf, um, there's only about a 10% chance of them growing into a plant if the root bound or, or if the root doesn't have the original stem that it was uh, cut from, right? So um, I haven't actually checked that out yet. I'm probably gonna do that to see if this guy has a stem um, uh, with the roots. If he does, then he has a very, very good shot of growing into a plant. I actually learned um, that tip from um, um, one of my um, uh, friends on Instagram. Um, she has a beautiful uh, Hoya Carey uh, plant that I'm so jealous of. So I am hopeful for this little guy. And uh, yeah, we'll see um, in a few months time if he is going to produce um, some plants. And, and actually, they do say like, just because it doesn't have the stem, it doesn't mean it may never grow into a plant. It just is less likely to. So whether he has a stem in, his, uh, in, in, in the roots or not, um, I am going to be very hopeful that he's going to turn into uh, a nice, beautiful plant because um, you know my love and care uh, will hopefully be enough to make this guy into uh, a really, really beautiful plant. Um, so the next plant I got, ta-da, the zebra plant. So this plant um, is another one of my favorites and I've been looking for this plant for a while and obviously there is no denying that 
Uh, this plant is a beautiful plant and the um, you know green with the deep white uh, stripes, uh, hence the reason why this, it's called the zebra plant, makes this plant extremely attractive. Um, uh, and I loved and I saw it um, yeah, at, the pla at the nursery and it just stood out from the rest of the plants because of the way he looks. Um, so he does have a bit of damaged leaves that I'm going to you know, cut out. Um, but you know, the one thing about the zebra plant is um, they do like high humidity uh, environment, bright, bright light. Um, obviously, um, you know, they can be a bit ter temperament, but um, you know, when it comes to the plants, I just gotta make sure that the soil is uh, more on the moist side than on the um, uh, drier side. But yeah, another one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if you guys like zebra plants um, or what you think of this guy, but uh, I think he is very, very handsome. Uh, so yeah, so I think that's about it. Um, ooh, I do have one more. So ta-da! The nerve plant or Phytonia. So this is actually my second one. And uh, the first one I got was a green one. And I actually had no idea he came in red. Um, but look how beautiful this plant is uh, with those patterns. And um, again, the one thing about the Phytonia plant is they are really, really easy to take care of. And you know, they obviously like um, you know, to be watered. You don't obviously want to keep you know, let these guys dry out. But if you do let them dry out and they do become droopy, uh, it doesn't take much for them to, um, you know, come back to life. And I have experienced that with my other one, which was a green one, but they can thrive really, really well in uh, medium uh, to bright light. But actually, I just saw a video um, last night from the Sorry Girls where they did a test of different plants and it's actually a pretty cool video. They called it the plant games where they took five different plants or six, uh, they put it in the bathroom which virtually had no sunlight whatsoever and the only light that it was getting was their bathroom light and this one was one of the four that um, thrived really, really well. So I thought that was a cool experiment. Uh, so if you are looking to put plants in your bathroom that you don't have any sunlight, uh, this is a good one to have in there. I'm actually going to link that video in the description because I do think you guys should check it out. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a funny experiment uh, and it was really informative as well too. And I think they did a great job. So um, again, check that video out. But um, I think that's about it. So how many plants is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go, 10 plants that I picked up since my last plant haul and um, I don't know if I should be embarrassed of it or not. You know what, I'm not and uh, I'm really, really happy with them. And I think now uh, my problem is obviously trying to find places for them so then I can do a proper plant tour for you guys. But um, I am going to promise to do that at my next video. I'm not gonna buy any more plants after this. I, I promise, so um, stay tuned for that plant tour uh, because I actually do wanna get some of your advice and uh, opinion on where I should place some of these plants and how I should um, kind of decor my place because honestly, I, I'm not sure if I should hang some of them or put them into shelves, uh, maybe get a bookcase. Um, I don't know, so uh, I am kind of struggling to making that decision. So I would love some of your views and opinions on that. So definitely come back for that plant tour. Uh, but other than that, so that's it for now, guys. That is the end of this plant haul. And if you do enjoy these videos, don't forget to comment below and let me know. Subscribe to this channel or follow me on Instagram, Crazy Plant Guy, uh, to check out my collection there. Other than that, I will see you guys soon. And yeah, take care. Peace.